Okay, so in 9.3, we're going to talk about different theorems and relationships that occur within arcs and chords of a circle. So the first part says, if a line, segment, or ray divides an arc into two congruent arcs, then it bisects the arc. Remember, um, we saw this with angles, but bisect means two, and to cut means to sect. Um, and so they're going to be two congruent arcs. And there's still that relationship between the arcs. So in words, if a diameter or radius of a circle is perpendicular, remember that means to form a right angle, to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So let's look at this example, okay? So we know that AB is a diameter, and we see this little right uh, square shape that means that's a 90 degree angle, which means that that's 90 degree angle, that's 90 degree angle, and that's 90 degree angle. And so AB is perpendicular to XY. AB is the diameter, XY is a chord. And so this theorem would apply. So because they're perpendicular, it means that XZ is congruent or the same length as YZ. Okay? And so that's the whole idea. Um, if a diameter or radius of a circle bisects a chord, it must be perpendicular to the chord. So if we didn't have that little shape also drawn in, if we knew that these two lengths were equal, then we could say that they were perpendicular. Okay, so that's the idea. All right, so let's look at some examples how we might use this. So in circle S, they tell you that the measure of PQR is 98. So I'm going to draw that. So find the measure of P to Q. So what I notice is SQ is a radius, so that's why it doesn't have to be a diameter, but if that's a radius, and they show you that that's a right angle, so I've got a chord, PR, and a radius, and they tell you that they're perpendicular to each other. So I know that these two are equal lengths. So if my, it's kind of that same idea that if I know um, the length, is congruent, then the arcs are congruent. So we're going to take 98 and we can divide that exactly in half because of that idea of bisecting. Okay, and so this would be 49 and this would be 49. All right, so in circle S, find PR. Well, if that's 6 and these are equal, then this is going to be 6. So P to R is the total length, which is going to be 12. All right. So let's look at our next idea. This one gets used quite a lot, and I don't think it's really um, obvious or common sense. So it's just kind of nice to have this formalized. So if you have two chords, remember a chord goes, has its endpoint on the circle. If two chords intersect inside a circle, then the product of the lengths of the segment of one chord is equal to the product of the lengths of the other chord, okay? And so we write this out in symbols, but it says if I have EA, times EB, notice how that's one chord together, and that's also going to equal the product of the other two chord parts. So EC times EB. All right, and so I could also just number this. So what if I did one, two, three, four? And so it says one times two equals three times four. So you want these parts that you multiply to be on the same chord. All right, like I said, there's a Quick proof of this, but I just don't think that that's always immediately obvious. Okay, so let's look at example three. Using that idea, I know BD is a chord and AC is a chord. So I'm going to take the two parts of BD. So we're going to say 5 times 14 is equal to the other two parts of AC. So X times 10. And since you're multiplying, it doesn't matter the order that you wrote them in as long as you have the same parts of each chord together. All right, so then we would just solve this. So we get 0 to 70 equals 10x. Those are being multiplied, so we'll divide by 10, and x equals 7. Okay. Um, on my next example, same idea. It doesn't get much harder than this. So 14 times x equals 7 times 12. I 
could even divide now, but I'll go ahead and multiply. 14x equals, what's that, 4, 8, 84. So divide by 14. And so x equals 6. Now, it might ask you for the length of the total chord. It really just depends, but you would read the directions. Okay? All right. Our last theorem says if you have two chords that intersect in a circle, which we just saw, then the measure of each angle formed is half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angles. And that's a lot of words, but once you see the picture, it'll make more sense. Okay? So if I look at the red, I've got angle one. And so if I look across from there, I know that's an arc that's related kind of to it. It's not an inscribed angle or a central angle. And then because these are vertical angles, I know those would be equal. And so the arc is kind of related to it as well. And so that's the information you would use. So it says that the size of angle one is equal to half if I would add these two arcs together. Okay. And we can use the same idea for the other angle if we want. So I know that's looking blue. So if I have angle two, it's going to be half the measure of these two arcs added together. All right, so let's look at example number five. So it says find the value of x. I know, here's x. And so the arcs that it's related to are right there. So I know x is equal to half of the two arcs added together. And you could write this a bunch of different ways. So I get half of, what is that? Uh, 106, I'm just going to add these together, 0, 1, 8, 280. You're welcome to use a calculator. And then half of 280 is 140. And that's the size of the angle. Now notice it is an obtuse angle, so this should make sense. Okay? That's the whole idea. Um, and we can solve in a slightly different way. And you could do this logically or using an equation. I'm just going to show you the equation because I think you could figure out this using logic. So if I have this angle, it's related to these two arcs. So I know my angle is equal to half of my arcs added together. Now, you have a couple of options. I could distribute the half, but I always, instead of distributing, as long as I multiply by two and multiply by two on the left, this is a valid way to solve. I get 160 has to add up to both of these. And this is how you would do it logically because you're thinking, oh, that's my angle. I need to double it because that's how much the two arcs have to add up to, okay? So then I can either think about this logically or I could just use the algebra. Total choice. So 100 is the length of that arc. All right. So go ahead and using those basic ideas of these three theorems, you're going to solve problems. All right. 